Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Welcome, 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 everyone. Every time I hear that music, I just want to, you know, bring up the beat and start to dance. My name is Ranchal Van Bryce, and welcome to Ignite Your Success with Ranchal, and I am your host. You know, I thought it would be appropriate that my premiere episode here at Inspired Choices Network would be all about success. As a coach, you know what? I have found that a majority of successful, professional, and entrepreneurial women they still uh, experience imposter syndrome or the feeling that they don't know enough, they aren't smart enough, or just a general sense of, I'm not enough. I know that certainly ha- was my challenge. At some point in the cycle of their business or profession, they even question their value or worthiness. You know, my clients have shared with me what they really want is to have freedom with their time and money to do what they want. That the, this was their dream. Uh, when they decide to become an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and professional. You know what? Uh, I want to share with you that my clients uh, believed that to have more success, they'd have to work harder and could no longer do that. Or they felt that they needed another new strategy or tool in order to be more successful. The result, and maybe you can re- relate to this, invested time and money into things that didn't work. You see, the real problem is that a small shift is needed in how we approach problems, challenges, and obstacles. We need to understand that a new strategy based on our current beliefs and thought patterns will not bring a different outcome. In fact, it brings more of what we don't want. And the feelings of imposter syndrome, the concern about our competition, and our constant comparing ourselves to others does not go away with a new strategy. You know, my mission, my purpose, you could say, is to share my journey and to guide women to let go of competition and comparison and and imposter syndrome so that they can live their best life. One that is defined by them, not by someone else. When we love our life, we can be, do, or have anything that we desire. So let's get started today. Today's show really is about success and how do you define it? Uh, I often ask my clients when we start to work together. To, to do that, to define success. What does success actually mean for you? And it's interesting what happens is in the um, ch- chatting with people, when they tell me about success, it happens to be like a destination, an arrival. I'll be successful when I have X amount of dollars in the bank. I'll be successful when I lose 20 pounds. I'll be successful when I get the new house the new car, the other car, whatever that is. And in fact, if you look at the definition of success or of success in the Webster's Dictionary, it talks about the degree or measure of succeeding. It talks about having a favorable or desired outcome, the attainment of wealth, favor or eminence, one that succeeds, I like that, okay? And an obsolete definition is about outcomes and results. But there's a problem with this. When it becomes a destination, you uh, don't enjoy the journey. Now, that's probably something you've heard over and over again. And I know that I did when I had my Curves franchises, but I was always looking to have a thing or to do something before success would actually happen. And in this journey, my entrepreneurial journey, what I realized was every time that I actually uh, received or achieved the success, I was really disappointed. And I, um, that's part of the challenge in thinking that success is this destination. You know, when we work hard for success, when we're facing, you know, different values like, uh, like that, and we're looking outside of ourselves, we're looking for this thing in the future, it always feels like we've never got there. We've never achieved. We haven't um, quite arrived at this place 
that we call success. So one of the first things I like to do when I work with people is to have them, right? Think about that. What is your definition of success? How do you actually know when you've arrived at success? Right? Can you take a look and reframe success? Can you look at it differently? Can you look at the journey of success? Can you have benchmarks along the way of success? Right? What will that look like for you? And I'm going to actually share some questions that I uh, talk about with my clients on a very regular basis when we talk about this thing that seems to almost escape us all the time, which is success. And why is that? Why do you think uh, when you start to move towards this goal that you have, move towards a successful business or a successful relationship or a profession, or I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're moving towards. When you have this idea that it's something to be achieved, you miss so many moments. You miss so many aha moments, so many opportunities to literally stop and smell the roses. I get it. That sounds super cliche. And when the first time I, someone challenged me on that, I was like, that is the most cliche thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But it was true. I was working so darn hard to get someplace and I didn't even know where I wanted to go. I didn't even know what a, a, a successful business would be like for me. I mean, I certainly had an idea about the money piece. That was one of the ways that I measured success. The challenge with that though, is we have ebbs and flows in business. And so if we're only saying that success is a, a dollar amount and we don't achieve that dollar amount, that can actually affect how we feel about ourselves in the moment. And it's how we feel, it's our thoughts, it's our emotions that will be the driver to success. So this is why at the premier event, I thought, you know what? This is what I wanna talk about. I really want to dive deep into a couple other different ways to reframe success for you. And so I'm so excited that you're here with me today at Inspired Choices Network. So when I had the Curves, I'm going to share a quick story with you again. So when I had the Curves franchises, you know, one of the things that I thought was a, was a successful business was totally based on a dollar amount. Now, to be completely transparent with you, my goal was to have a company that generated more than a million dollars in revenue. And one of the reasons why this is important was it certainly had something to do with the material things that I desired, not going to lie. But the other piece of this was I became aware that there were a, a lot of curves franchises that never saw the revenue of a million dollars. So I kind of took that as a personal challenge. But the other piece that I, that I uh, statistic that I was had uncovered was that at, even at that time, you know, more than 20% of uh, new businesses were being opened by women and less than 2% of women create, generate more than a million dollars in sales. And I wanted to be one of those people that, that defied those odds. And so I set upon a track of, of creating a business and I bought a franchise for that reason so that I could create this, this uh, successful business of over a million dollars in revenue. But in the process of creating the successful business, now, because I suffered from imposter syndrome and because I suffered from the I'm not enough, I sacrificed things like my relationship with my friends and my former spouse. Note, former spouse, right? I sacrificed my health and wellness to achieve this thing that I was calling success but I hadn't even defined success other than the money piece, right? So as I was moving towards this financial goal and making all of these sacrifices to get said goal, when I got there, my first thought was, is this all there is? I was expecting to be excited. I was expecting to really want to celebrate. And I did, I certainly celebrated. There was, it was, there was something to celebrate, but it came at such a great cost that there was so much sadness 
around the achievement of the goal, around what I was defining as success. And I was challenged at that time to look at what else success could be, to look at how else I could define success. I was at a yoga retreat in New Mexico when someone challenged me on this. And it opened myself up to, it opened my eyes, opened my heart up to another way of looking at what it is that I wanted. Now, what I do know for sure is that we are actually designed to want more. We are designed to desire more. And that desire comes from, and I'm going to talk about this in the future episodes, that desire comes from what some people would refer to as divine source, uh, intelligence, uh, spirit, God, Buddha, Allah, goddess. And so the key here really is insert whatever word makes you comfortable. So when I started to look at this and, and I realized that I was dissatisfied with my goals. I was dissatisfied with my life. And the reason for being dissatisfied was that I always wanted more. So success for me, because it was a destination, I felt like I was never successful. And because I was always wanting more, I felt dissatisfied. And therefore, I believed that I wasn't successful because I could never feel this to be satisfied. And in fact, it's one of the things I share with my clients is that because we do, we're, we, we are meant to want more. We're meant to want more life. We're meant to express more. So when we are feeling dissatisfied, I took that as a slight. I took that as there must be something horribly wrong with me if this is what was going on. And so what happens is we're in this, dissatis this being dissatisfied, we can take a look at that and celebrate that. There's a reason to celebrate that. So if I redefine success, and I'm going to share with you how to do that in this episode. If I redefine success, and I think about it, it's not just a destination, right? And, and some people are certainly motivated to go towards that destination, right? Are, more, are motivated with inspired with revenue. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people aren't. It's just to understand where you are at. So as you're moving towards this goal, this successful business, uh, and you're thinking about, other than maybe the revenue in business, what else can I measure for success? And know then that you actually, when you get to that space, when you get to this place of success, you're going to want more. This is key. This is key because so many of us judge ourselves for the wanting more. Now, we're going to be going to break really quick. Before we do that, I want to share something with you that really, really changed the way that I showed up. And I was introduced to something called the Desire Map and uh, Goals with Soul. And so we're going to talk a little bit more after this, after the break, but let me share you the story with you first. So I was exposed, ooh, that's a word, exposed to Desire Map and Goals with Soul because someone asked me how I wanted to feel about my life and my business. And I paused because I really couldn't answer that. I had a lot of confusion. And so then I was asked, how would you like to feel about your life? So how do I feel and how do I want to feel? I drew a blank. I was so confused. I mean, the words that came to mind were good, fine, excited, maybe passionate. And this woman who was shared, was, I was taught, chatting with slid over these positive words, 150 positive words. And I was like, you've got to be, insert very bad word, kidding me. There's this many emotions and this many feelings, right? And so she asked me to go through this exercise and pick out the words that resonated with me, that wanted me to, uh, that I could guide me to a new way of showing up and a new way to define success. 
All right. So as I share that story or end that story, let's go to break. It's time for our first break. You know what? When we return, I'm going to share with you the words that I actually came up with this year. So every year I do this where I come up with my words, my, my inspired action words. So when we return, we're certainly going to continue to discuss how you define success. And I'm going to share some tips. Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with Entrepreneurial Success Coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back, everyone, to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. And Are I, you a subject matter host, expert? Ranchell. Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thank you so much. I so much appreciate if you're here, whether you're here live with me or you're listening. My name is Ranchal Van Bryce and welcome to the show, Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. As I shared earlier, this is my premier event here at Inspired Choices Network. I'm super excited to be here. And, you know, just want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to share this passion that I have with you. So before we went to break, I was spending some time, you know, discussing a little bit about success as a destination and some of the challenges that we can have when we define success as this thing that we arrive to. Uh, and you know what, what happens when we do that, if we don't actually get exactly where we want to go, then we will deem ourselves to be unsuccessful. And the other piece of that, of course, is that when that happens and we're on our way and we don't look at the journey, right, we just look at this destination, uh, then we can spend a lot of time mm, working hard at arriving at this thing versus taking time, you know, to, uh, to really, I guess, express, to feel, to um, experience the success. Okay. You know, so one of the things I was talking with you and I was sharing, you know, my story about goals with soul and how that came about. And really what ended up happening, you know, in this um, is I took, took this work and I started to every, so every 12 weeks. Now, let me just back up for a moment. When I'm setting goals, uh, I actually set 12 week goals and it's uh, inspired by the 12 week year by Brian Moran. So every 12 weeks, I set a yearly goal. And every 12 weeks, I take a look at how I want to feel about my business. Because for me, success has more to do with how I want to feel versus the outcome, versus the achievement of things. So this year, I want to share with you some of my words. So luminous, magical liberated, graced, prosperous, delighted, and adventurous. You know, doesn't that sound juicy? <laughs> right? I used to set goals uh, the smart way. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, you know, but the very specific, measurable, attainable, right? 
traceable or trackable. I can't even remember what smart means anymore. When I moved to understanding how I wanted to feel about my life, that changed everything. That changed how I defined success. And it's not just to do with my business, it's my life. Because business is part of my life, right? Career is part of your life. There are other components to that. There's health and wellness. There might, you might have the, a, spiritual, um, a spiritual goal. You might have something that you want to define that what's spiritually successful for you. There's things like community goals, right? There's health and wellness, financial. There's, there's all of these different parts of our life. So when we're creating success or we're thinking about success, doesn't it sound fun to figure out how you want to feel first, right? This is an amazing tool. For example, when I think of magical and I want my life to be magical, I want my life to feel magical. And I drill that down into business, right? I want my business to be magical and to feel magical. And that's what a successful business, that's a part of what successful business is, is defined by me. It is so much fun because I don't necessarily, I don't worry about the end result. I experience magic along the way. It really changed the way that I showed up in my life. It changed the way that I experienced my business. So I wasn't on this track where I was had this like really, really narrow focus, but I allowed me to take my focus and expand it because I started to see things. I started to look for things that had less to do with money. For me, it was money and more to do with well, in this case, we'll talk about magic, right? It had more to do with all of these components, right? So one of the things that happened with me when I decided how I wanted to feel, the next question I asked myself was, who do I need to be? Now, the first time I did this, and I'm going to encourage you to follow along with me, right? So think about how you want to feel, right? Then think about who do you need to be in order for you to feel, in order for all that to happen. So if I define success as magical, luminous, right? And I want my business to feel like that. Then asking myself, who do I need to be well, I need to be courageous. I need to do things that put me outside of my comfort zone. I need to be able to make a mistake and be okay with it. I need to be purposeful. I need to be on the lookout for new experiences. Now, the first time I did this exercise, it was easier for me to fill out and find the seven right feelings, the way that I wanted my life to feel. When I asked myself who I need to be, I went into a to-do list. I started writing down my tasks, right? And you may be inclined to do that as well, but I want you to pause because it's not about doing. I bet if you are listening to me either here live with me or you're listening to the recorder recording, I bet you're a doer, right? You already know how to do. You're great at doing. Right? But being is different. Deciding who you need to be can be a little bit of a mind. Uh, I won't say the word, right? <laughs> it can be a little stressful because lots of times we actually don't know who we desire to be. We know what we want. We know what we need to do. We have an idea of what we need to do, but we really have no clue about being, being magical, being luminous, right? Being inspired. All of those words that I shared with you, that is a completely different thing. You know, I used to, um, at different times of my life, would consider myself successful because I was doing so much, 
I was doing so much. And I had a business coach and she asked me, are you doing busy work or are you doing pr product, like productivity? And at that time, I didn't know what she meant. I said, what do you mean? And she said, there's a difference between being busy and thinking that you're doing something than actually, you know, creating a strategy. So we were, she was my strategic coach, creating a strategy that moves you forward into your goals. Now, the other challenge I had at that time was thinking that success was only appeared in my life if I achieved my goals. So that's when I said that I've had that experience of both having success based on what I was doing, but also feeling super unsuccessful because what I was doing wasn't getting me. So I use those words. I don't use those words anymore. Um, wasn't getting me what I wanted, right? And it wasn't getting me what I wanted because I was busy doing things that were, and some of those tasks were unproductive. So that's really important as well. So we'll go back. Let's review. So once you have these words, right, and I'm happy to share those words with you, um, you can certainly, you know, connect, connect with me and I'll, I'll share that at the end of the show, how you can connect with me. I'm happy to share those words. Um, once you pick out the words, then what you do next, as I said, is you think about who do you need to be? And then after that, then it's really about inspired action. Now, inspired action is different, right? Uh, I can, I can write out a task list or to-do list like you would not believe. In fact, I no longer call those tasks or to-dos. I call that a brain dump. I do a brain dump every week, sometimes more than once a week, right? To keep me focused on what it is that's most important. So when I look at this uh, way of showing up, when I look at this new way, this reframed way of success, and I look at the inspired action. Now, inspired action is different for me when versus just doing the tasks or the brain dump. I have a, a, a connection to spirit. I'm very spiritual in nature. So when I am going to set my goals, when I decide what success looks like for me, and that definition, by the way, changes on a regular basis, true story. When I do that, I ask for divine guidance. I ask spirit to guide me every single day on what's the tasks that I should be doing. What are my to-dos? I see opportunity in everything that I see. And so, and there's certainly some, uh, some amazing things, components attached to that. The challenge though, is for me to stay on, to stay on track. The challenge for me is to stay focused. So when I ask for divine guidance, I'm given the next thing to do. I'm given the next, the next task. And that's why I call it inspired action. If I allow my personality, my persona, my ego self to drive the bus, I have busy work, right? I get overwhelmed. I'm overstressed because I think of all the things that need to be done. And it feels like everything needs to be done yesterday. So when I move into inspired action, there's such peace and calm with that, right? because I know that I'm being divinely guided. Now, if you don't believe in a higher power, I'll share with you after our break, our next break, which is coming up here shortly, I'll share with you how you can use science and creating new networks and new neural networks in your brain to inspire you, to help you with your tasks and your to-dos. You know what? This is a great time, a uh, great time uh, for a break. So let's go for a break. Oh, pardon me. So you're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle Van Bryce on Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, I will continue sharing some tips and tricks with regards to 
how you define success. Thank you so much. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with Entrepreneurial Success Coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. And again, my name is Ranchell Van Bright, and you are listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Today, our show topic is how do you define success? I was sharing before the break uh, with regards to, uh, it's important certainly to when you're reframing success is to look at it from a place of, of being, right? Versus just doing. It's such an important and a different way you know, to look at things. Now, I was also sharing with the listeners that when I'm going to take action, I have what I refer to as inspired action. And I have a connection to a higher power. My higher power leads the way. I ask my higher power what exactly I should be doing. Now, for those of you who do not have a higher power, right? Um, another way to look at this is to know that your brain is a goal achieving machine, right? So when you decide how you wanna feel and then you decide who you need to be, right? you can ask yourself, right? Self, <laughs> What are my next steps, right? Now, what's really important here is this isn't about asking yourself how. Your brain is a goal achieving machine. So if you ask yourself, how do I do X, Y, Z, and you don't know how to do that, right? Your brain will actually go back into your past and start looking for maybe past things that you've done to bring into your present to do. Your brain will also start to tell you that you can't do it because you don't know how to do it. So rather than asking yourself that question, what to do, like, I don't know how to do this, pardon me, how, how to do this. Instead, ask yourself, what do I do? What are my next steps? I'll even say things like, show me the way. And literally, I'm talking to my brain, right? My brain, because when you decide what you want when you decide the feelings, right? You decide who you need to be, your brain, your reticular activating system kicks in. It will start to look for the ways and means for you to achieve your goal or achieve success. So what I love about um, both tying in the spirituality and the science, regardless of how you look at things, when you understand how things work and you ask yourself different questions, you're going to have a different kind of uh, movement in your business, right? So let's go. I, I have so I just have so much to share with you. So, you know, before the break, I talked about be first, then do. When you have a strong connection to your definition of success, or a strong connection with your goals. And what do I mean by strong connection? Uh, some people would refer to this as your deeper why, right? Why do you want to do this? 
Now, again, a challenge with a question like why, because your brain's a goal achieving machine, if you don't know why you want to do this, like if you think about it from that perspective, then there's confusion. And when, our, when we're confused, when our minds are confused, we have a lack of clarity. It's actually very difficult for us to achieve the success or achieve the goal. So again, questions are so important. Um, and so rather than asking a why question, you can ask something like about, what about this, right? What about this inspires me? What about this, you know, gives me joy? What about this, you know, wakes me up with inspiration in the morning? What about this is magical, right? So as you're defining or redefining success, you know, redefining maybe some of your goals. Asking those kinds of questions really allows your brain to access a different part of your neural network. We'll do that. We'll access, uh, if you, uh, from a spiritual perspective, right, the universe is conspiring for you. So we'll put before you certain things. Whenever I have confusion and I start asking for questions for clarity, I am always, I still am always in awe. I'm always amazed that the answers come to me. Uh, and they might come, I might see somebody doing something and go, oh my goodness, I could totally replicate that. Or, oh, what about this? Or uh, I might see an ad, you know, or uh, on Facebook, or I might see somebody doing something someplace else, or I might be, you know, in Starbucks and the answer comes in Starbucks, right? So as you put out there, you know, what it is that you desire, things start to move into place for you. It feels, it really does, it really does feel magical. So as I said, some people would refer to this, know your why, know your deeper reason. Some people would refer to this as know your mission statement or be aware of your, of your purpose. And sometimes that can be really difficult. You know, um, when I was in mid forties, I decided that I wanted to bodybuild. And this is a time that most women retire um as opposed maybe at mid 40s but 44 most women retire from bodybuilding at that particular age and I decided I wanted to bodybuild and the reason I decided that was my daughter and son and I were talking about goal setting and their dad didn't goal set and I was always setting goals right I was always working on on that part of myself and we talked about the difference and you know I said to them it, some people don't set goals it doesn't it's not right or wrong. I just have always been that person who set goals. And we talked about, it was really funny because we said, and I said to the kids, you can, you can be, do, or have anything that you want, you know, set a goal, right? Set an intention and uh, decide that's what you want and then move towards your goal. And on a regular basis, check in to see if you're moving out towards that. So we'll say success towards that success. Or are you moving away from that goal, away from success? And it can be really that, that simple. And it was funny because both of my kids were, um, were competitive athletes in, in school. So as we're talking about this, my daughter said to me, is there anything that you've really, really wanted to do and you've never done? And I said, no, I, I couldn't think of anything. But, you know, I went upstairs later on that night and realized that I had wanted to bodybuild for so long. And I didn't because of the influence of my father and the influence of their dad. And I, I, I realized that it had been a burning desire for so many years. And I kind of set it aside. And part of it was thinking really at that time that I was too old, right, to, to bodybuild and that I didn't have time. You know, I, I was, um, I had eight Curves franchises, right? So that I didn't have time for that. But the more and more that I thought about it, the more that I realized that I, want, I, I wanted to, I wanted to experience what bodybuilding would be like. And for me, it actually wasn't about winning a medal. So I didn't define my success as standing on stage and winning a medal, but really started to look at success for me could be the journey, could be the experience. And, and why am I sharing this with you? Because when I realized that I wanted to be a role model for my kids. I wanted to show them that it didn't matter whatever they wanted to do, 
they could make the decision to do it. That success could be the decision to do something regardless of the outcome. Now, I never won, um, I never won a medal, right? I did four, four or five shows in total. Um, and it was, it was a success because I didn't a, define it on winning, right? And, so, and some people would and are, and that's awesome. But for me, it wasn't about that. For me, it was about really deciding that I, that I wanted to do this thing that I had wanted to do for so long and letting go of what my father would say, uh, letting go of being worried about judgment, letting go of what society would say, and just surrendering into this, uh, into this desire. So part of success is surrendering into the isness of the thing. So I'm going to say that again. Part of success is surrendering into the isness of the thing, of your experience. Because every experience that we have, every experience can lead us to what we desire. But if we get caught up in the, it's not what I thought, or it's, it doesn't quite look the way that I thought it was going to look. And we define success by that component, then we will, we would feel that in this particular instance, my bodybuilding journey wasn't successful, which isn't true. So this is kind of has like a, a double-edged sword, sword that I'm sharing the story I'm sharing with you. One is know your why. So I'm going to use that word, know your why. Right? And part of that can be connected to how do you want to feel, right? Because if we're just doing things for the sake of doing things, we're just, you know, uh, have a business for the sake of, you know, uh, creating an income and a revenue, but we don't have a deeper meaning behind it. We don't have a deeper understanding of what it is. What ends up happening is, and this is what uh, my clients will seek me out for this. What ends up happening is we sacrifice health and wellness. We sacrifice relationship to be successful. And do you really think that success is defined by having ill health or having the relationships break down, right? It's so important. It's so important when we take a look at the whole picture of how we define success. And I say we, because my, how I define success may be completely different than how you define success. And I think part of the opportunity that we have here is to really settle into our own selves, settle into our own desires and think about what that looks like for us, what this feels like for us, right? Versus I gotta go do this thing. I gotta hustle, I gotta grind, I gotta work 12 hours, 14 hours a day so I can get revenue, right? There's a completely different feeling, right? To, um, if you're choosing different words. So, you know, the words that I had talked about was magical, liberated, graced, right? Feeling that and having my business and my life show up that way versus hustling for coaching clients, right? It just feels different. So then by definition, the success will feel a bit different as well. And when we understand our why, when we understand how we define success, what ends up happening is the universe conspires for you or in this, or your brain, your reticular activating system kicks in and will find ways and means for you to achieve your success. Now, the challenge is that Sometimes the ways and means is not wrapped up in like a Tiffany box with a white bow. It sometimes is messy. It sometimes looks like when my kids, when they were little and wrapped Christmas presents, it was one big crunchy, right? And massive amounts of tape and a bow. And I mean, it looked like a three year and four year old had wrapped it. And so we don't want to define success by even by the things that are going on 
right? Success is a journey. And so it may or may not look like a Tiffany box for you. It may look kind of like it looked like for me, which is this big old mess, but there was inside the mess was beauty. So as we're facing obstacles and challenges, it doesn't mean we're not successful. What it means is that we decided we wanted something. We decided how we wanted to feel. We made a decision about who we needed to be. We decided to take inspired action. And once we decided to do all of that, the outcome might look a little bit messy. The obstacles, the challenges that come up. It's so exciting though. It's so very exciting. And if we say that we're only successful, <laughs> If everything is pleasant, then of course, based on that, we wouldn't say we're successful. So if we go back into how do I want to feel, and this becomes a journey, this becomes an experience, and we surrender into the isness of things, then every moment of every day truly is a win. And can you imagine the self-confidence that you'll have, the self-esteem that you would have if every day you saw the win in the mess. You see the win in the mess because that's really what it's about. That is truly what it's about. All right. You know what? Let's go to our third break. Oh, pardon me. So let's go to our third break of the show. When we return, we're going to wind this all up. I'm so happy to be here. You're listening to Ignite Your Success with myself, Ranch Alvin Bryce on Inspired Choice Network. Now, don't forget, you can download in Apple or Android the app to listen to this live or on demand. You can certainly join us live in the chat room on the app. You can click on the show's tab in the chat room image. Go check it out. It's free. Just search Inspired Choices Network. Awesome. Thanks. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach, Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome, welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited to have you, whether you're here with me live or you're listening to the replay. It's so great to have you. Again, my name is Ranchal Van Bryce, and I'm talking about success and how do you define success? You know, so far, so far in the show, you know, we talked about a little bit about reframing success, not treating it like a destination, but rather looking at the journey of success. We talked about looking at things from the different perspective of how do you want to feel in your life? How do you want to feel in your business? You know, then asking yourself, who do you need to be? And then taking inspired action. I shared with you a few tips, of course, you know, with regards to, uh, to taking action. With inspired action, it can be either science-based, right? Decide what you want. Reticular activating system kicks in. Things start to move. Or through, if you have a spiritual background, you, you can think of it from that perspective. The universe conspires to work with you. Last but not least, before the break, I shared with you that sometimes it's messy, right? Sometimes what we're doing does not show up in a Tiffany box with a white bow. So if we're only saying that success has to do with the arrival of, or every experience has to be like this amazing stellar experience, we will feel that we're not successful. What's truth though, is that there's an isness to every experience that we have. And we can actually look at the experiences and look at it through a lens of what is this share? What is this telling me? You know, how do I need to maybe feel? You know, so go back to the feeling words or, you know, who do I need to be in order for me to be, to do? And we can use these tools over and over again, especially for going through a rough patch. I mean, you know, I think we, we, we look at business 
And, you know, when I, when I thought about owning my business, I, and I was, oh my goodness, I was 30. That was many, many years ago. I really thought that um, you, what it would do, it would be a straight line. And it wasn't, it was kind of like all over, right? That's really the destination to success looks like that. It's never this straight line. Okay. I really want to share, I'm going to share with you, pardon me, this last few minutes while we're together, uh, just a few mm, aha moments that I had uh, that I want to share with you. So I had mentioned this earlier, your brain is a goal achieving machine. So whatever you decide what you want, your brain will conspire with you to ensure that happens. Your mind really is the governing power. You see it first in your mind, and then you can create it. I also want to share with you that beliefs dictate your destiny. So uh, one of the most, you know, my favorite Henry Ford quotes, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can't. That's probably not, that's not the exact quote. But really, if you believe that you can achieve something, you will, right? If you believe in something and you have this belief that's moving you forward, then it will happen. But so many of us have limiting beliefs. We're all programmed with limiting beliefs. We face anywhere to about 70 limiting beliefs a day. So really what we, we want to do is we want to learn how to control our mind, right? We want to learn how to utilize our, our emotions, uh, our feelings, our mind in order for us to propel us forward to what we define or what you're going to now define as success. I also wanted to remind you that wealth or success is not a place. It really does start with your mind and will continue with inspired actions. Last thing I want to share with you are beliefs about beliefs party are just decisions with evidence. This is one of my favorite things that I learned. A belief is simply a decision with evidence. So if I believe that I'm not enough and I have that, I will see all the evidence in my world about how I'm not enough. But I could also change that belief by making a new decision, I am enough, and then I can bring in evidence of being enough. That one thing, that one switch for me was amazing. It really opened up things for me because I had such, a, my, the, my I'm not enoughness was so huge. And when I realized that every time I thought that, my brain was wired to find all the evidence to, to, to prove that I wasn't enough. So when we're talking about success, imagine wanting success and having this, I'm not enough in the background. So every road I took led to not success because I had this belief of not being enough. So your mind is so, uh, so very, very powerful. If you want success, then truly be success. Be clear about what success is for you. That is so very, very important, right? Is to understand what success is for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with me. I absolutely have been loved, loved being here. Uh, join me next week on the next show, How Shift Happens. And be really careful how I said it. How Shift Happens, a, si a simple explanation of how thoughts become things. And it's really going to be a continuation of what we're talking about here with regards to success. Imagine that. Ignite Your Success is going to continue talking about how you can create success uh, in, in your life. So let's recap real quick. Redefine success for yourself. How, decide how you want to feel about your life and business. Ask yourself, who do you need to be? Take inspired action. Be aware of the cues that come to you. This is so very, very important. Remember, your brain is a goal achieving machine. Your mind is the governing power for everything. We need to see it first, then create it. Till next time. Thank you for listening to Be Ignite big. Your Success Be with bold. Ranchelle. Ranchelle returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, 
Be brilliant. Be you.